I want to tell you a story. There's a girl who lives in Afghanistan, and both of her parents have died. She lives in a refugee camp with her grandmother, her brother, and her three sisters. So much about her life is uncertain. This is the power of an image. When I told you this story before, many of you would have pictured very different things. But when this image was published in June of 1985, people wanted to know more about who this person was. They connected with her. In fact, the Afghan Girls Fund was set up and over a million dollars was raised to help send girls in Afghanistan to school. This is the power of an image. Photography can change the world. We live in a time where every single one of you has the power to change the world. And that power is in your pocket. We all have a device that can capture images easily and share them with the world. But unlike Steve McCurry, who captured that image in, back in 1985, we don't have to wait for these, our photos to be developed. We can see them right away and share them with others. So naturally, how do we use this amazing piece of technology? <laughs> what does your device's camera roll say about you? Because looking through a lens also means looking into a mirror. The power of photography has always been personal to me. First, it's a, a personal, uh, first, it's a personal crusade of mine to help others become better photographers. Second, photography can connect with someone on a personal level. There are six ways that photography can change the world. Let's look at some examples of each. Relate. We can use photography to connect with other people. An example of helping people relate is the UWC SEA Humans of UWC SEA project that we started at our school. The aim of the project was to connect with other members of our community. It was great to learn about Chua, who is a cleaner at our school. He worked for Singapore Airlines for 34 years. Now, people liked the project so much that they asked us to feature some of their favorite members of the community, like Camus, who's a security guard. He actually played the clarinet for 25 years before becoming a security guard in the army. So who might you want to relate to using photography? When we use photography to relate, we connect with someone. When we use photography to reveal, it can be larger than just connecting with one person. So we could reveal what a place is like, what life is like. One of the schools in Cambodia that we work with is a school for the blind in Phnom Penh. This is that school. The students are learning to re read Braille and write in Braille with a hole punch system. They're learning to play instruments. And they have a touch dictionary that helps them feel what objects are like. Of course, we can reveal the happy lives that these kids live every single day. So what might you want to reveal through photography? We can use photography to be a witness. You were there. You saw an event. I could tell you about the Hair for Hope event that, we ha that happened at our school where kids shaved their heads to raise money for cancer. Or I could show you the images. Images that do so much more to help you understand the emotions of the day, from tears to surprise and excitement and pride for doing something to help others. So what might you want to witness through photography? When we use photography to prove something, it's larger than just witnessing an event. We can show others what's happening on a larger scale. Maybe it's the forest being cut down, or poverty, or pollution. So one of the things that was bothering me was that garbage was being left around after, uh, after lunch at our school. Sometimes it was plates that just weren't returned to the right place, or bags that had been delivered and not recycled. Sometimes things were dropped on the floor and not picked up, even though there were reminders to clean up after oneself. So what might you want to prove through photography? Images can help protect things that aren't already destroyed. Your job is to make people care and want to protect something before it's too late. I live in Singapore, and many people think of it as one big city with lots of buildings and roads everywhere. But there's a lot of wildlife in that city and around the country. 
And there are some of the areas of the country that are wetlands with various animals roaming around. I still haven't seen the elusive pangolin, but I hope to one day. So what might you want to protect with photography? Finally, photography can celebrate something. We work with a school for the deaf in Cambodia, and we raised a bunch of money to purchase iPads for that school. We went to the school and we did tr uh, teacher training with, those, with the teachers to help them learn how they could use those iPads with their students to improve student learning. And of course, part of that was teaching them how to capture powerful images. We wanted to celebrate this relationship. So to do this, we captured portraits of the teachers with their iPads to celebrate the completion of the training. So what might you want to celebrate through photography? So what can you do? To start, we need to teach our students to capture powerful images. We need to help them see that what they see matters. As I mentioned, this is personal for me, so I created a free ebook called Stories Through the Lens to help others capture powerful images with their mobile device. So your camera roll is your story. What does your camera roll say about you? What do you want your camera roll to say about you? Let's build a generation of students who can relate to others, reveal a truth, be a witness to an event, prove a fact, protect what's important, and celebrate the amazing world that we live in. Let's help students not only to understand the power of photography, but also have the belief and the understanding that they can change the world through photography. Thank you very much.